Hello, everybody. We are the Podcasts, and welcome to our very first podcast, uh, where we are going to introduce ourselves and talk a little bit about um, why we are even doing an yet another podcast, Hidden Figures of Python. And uh, we have announced it already on social media, and we are also going to address a little bit some of the responses we've had. So with me today, we have uh, Marietta, Georgie, Chuck, and um, we are all, all over the world. So I'm Teresa, I live in Hamburg, I'm from Romania. I started PyLadies Hamburg long ago, and I'm involved in several of the Python Software Foundation groups like Code of Conduct and Diversity and Inclusion. And Marietta? Hi, everybody. My name is Marietta. I'm in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm a Python core developer. I'm an open source maintainer and contributor, and I'm involved in the Python community in a lot of ways, not only as the open source contributor, but also I run conferences, um, meetups. I've been the chair of the PyCascades. I, I co-founded the PyCascades conference, and I'm chairing like on US 2023 and 2024. I'll go to you, Georgie. Hello, everyone. This is Georgie here. I'm in Amsterdam. So I'm actually um, a little bit everywhere. So previously, I've been living in Thailand and um, helped out and organized and led uh, PyCon Thailand and also PyCon APEC 2021. Kind of not only Py Python related events, but also several hackathons and like Code War. And I did um, organize uh, RubyConf and co-founded um, PyLadies. And I'm also, um, I've also actually been designing um, the websites for PyCon and a few other main Python related um, events. Passing the mic to Chirk. Hello, I'm Chirk. I live in London. Uh, usually I'm not home because <laughs> I am a, a speaker at a lot of different places. Um, right now I'm in Tokyo, Japan. So hello. <laughs> um, also, uh, I am currently at the PSF board. Um, I've also been a PSF fellow since 2021. And um, yeah, I've been involved in a lot of work in the Python community. Yeah, so I think uh, maybe we should just explain a little bit why we come up with the name Hidden Figures. So we have been searching around and finding a lot of um, ideas. And Chuck even came up with uh, something crazy called uh, espresso orange juice which was actually just simply what I like to drink. <laughs> that was one of the first idea. And then eventually I remember um, Marietta came up with the hidden figures. So maybe Marietta, you can explain why it comes out with that, uh, you, you come up with that um, title. Well, yeah, I guess it's really about what is what are we doing in this podcast? Like what is the topic of this podcast is about? And I guess, when we talk about it, we wanted to highlight underrepresented group and uh, women in the Python community because we felt their stories aren't being shared enough or I think they, they're not getting the recognition that they deserve. And when thinking about that, I it brought me to the stories. Like Actually, there was a book about this and a, a, a movie that was a big hit the hidden figures which was also highlighting stories of you know african american women in in nasa um in in the past and i've thought this relates so much to what we see in the python community and i thought maybe let's let's use the name the the hidden figures of python yeah so um it's not just about the title i think the idea came up uh, kind of 
the kind of brew uh, into uh, what it is now, starting from PyCon US last year, which um, I seen like, you know, everybody's there. There's like a big party. A lot of people are excited um, to see so many people and, um, you know, uh, go to film some podcasts while they meet some speaker or some guests that they want to invite there in person. So um, I think that's great. But I have I have ob an observation about like most of the these guests or people who have been interviewed are um, male. <laughs> so um, it's just for me, it feels like um, of course these people they have achieved a lot of things. They got a lot of respect in the community. But I feel like. Are there, are there any women at all who kind of achieve the same level of, you know, contribution, getting respect from the community, but hasn't been featured for whatever reason? So um, that's why I think that, you know, we need to do something about it. So um, I talked to my good friends sitting here um, <laughs> and they're all on board of this idea that we should do something. So um, that's kind of how it got into, we want to do a podcast, we find a good name for it and um, why are we here? So I think Georgia and I are in the diversity and inclusion uh, work group with the PSF and here one aspect is also um, visibility and also highlighting role models because Another a side effect of seeing a lot of events and podcasts where there's mostly men talking or doing things or being highlighted that they're doing, it makes it not very inviting sometimes, right? And if for people that want to get started and they're from underrepresented groups in Tesh or women, and if you don't really feel like there's a role model, you don't see role models, you don't really uh, see that there is space for you like an inviting space and but i know like once you start getting involved so we have pi ladies we have all sorts of organizations in python once you start getting involved you see that there are people there are role models it's just that they're not it's not very obvious and i think this is how do we make that a little bit more obvious right so this is not about taking space from other people right it's more about highlighting that the space is a lot more diverse than it's looking at the moment. If I can add, like I feel there is there is a lot of power in highlighting role models. Um, for example, I could share my personal experience. Like when I, I went to PyCon for the first time ever, I saw lots of speakers, men and women. Like when I go to speakers, um, even though I saw lots of speakers, it was only when I saw another woman, another, you know, women of color on stage. That's that's the moment that I feel inspired myself that, oh, maybe I want to be like her. Like, I want to be a speaker too. And I, that kind of power you don't, I did not get it unless I actually see somebody. And I feel like there is responsibility in, you know, community leaders to not only provide content but making sure you are highlighting you know diverse members to be able to further inspire other people so that's that's what, what i want to get one thing um teresa you brought up about this and also marietta bringing this up i personally was a bit um surprised when i actually started stepping up as the organizer the PyCon um, Thailand lead at the first time. The moment I, I took over this um, this task, I see that there were more women that actually started joining and participating. The year when I actually started, there was slightly better, maybe like three or four, um, I would say from 10% of um, female speakers it increased to about 20%. And now that the ball got rolling, PyCon Th Thailand this year has um, about almost 50% female sub talk submission. And that is amazing. And this is what I meant by, it is not because, or what we meant, it is not because there are no female um, role models out there. 
we just need support. The moment when I was in PyCon US, I mean, we we attended Pi Ladies lunch. I mean, that's not only female. Of course, there are males joining, but it was so empowering when you are there. The ladies who are so afraid to step up actually have the courage to step up and talk about their stories, talk about how they went from zero to something, to something that everyone knew but was not talked about. And I think this is a part of the reason why I said yes to this podcast. Yeah, so I think it's a very good point of um, you have to have some role model there to take the lead. That's why I keep talking to organizers that do you have any women in your organizing team not just as a volunteer that you know do some small tasks and stuff they're actually in the i would say a leadership role that they're helping to make decision having to you know to be in the discussion and stuff we need that because you know you can say all what you want that we support diversity but even if it's so simple right like we are not talking about finding you know someone who may be you know quite difficult to find it's just you know well this world has you know two gender <laughs> well maybe more than two gender but majoritively there's two gender and like um so like even that like finding let's say women to to get involved to be there like do you, have you ever tried have you do it can you show that you have done it actions speak louder than words you can't just say that you support diversity and just keep onboarding people who look like you to be you know, because you just feel more comfortable working with them. So um, that brings us to the point where we want to find out why uh, there's, you know, we keep having seeing uh, men appearing in podcasts and stuff. So uh, Marietta volunteers to do the research. So um, Marietta, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I, I think, bef- I guess we just didn't have data about it, right? I. Personally, when I see podcast series announced, I pay attention. I pay attention that oh, it's if a uh, man on this on the you know podcast, and the next week is men again and again and again. And I thought maybe I should come up with the data. Like maybe we should actually collect so that it doesn't become just what Marietta thinks and becomes real data. And when I I collected the data um in September of 2023. I collected data from like three three popular podcasts and and you can read the result in our blog post uh, pypodcast.live slash blog. Um, it's a long URL, but find it. Basically, what I found out of three three different podcasts that's been going on for years that has more than 100 episodes each of them. Out of those episodes, 666 episodes on these women appear in only 17%, like 100 or so. And it's not also that there are 117 different women who appear on the episodes. Some women appear multiple times. So in fact, there are only 90 something episodes and 94, I believe, women out of 500 40 guests so also 17 percent women and and you know these these podcasts are considered as top python podcasts if you go to google and you try to look python podcasts these are in different search engines i tried different ones these three podcasts are the ones that appear and i feel like this Yes, they have different reasons maybe for doing their podcast, but appearing on the podcast also comes with, you know, a power to influence the Python community. And why are women being highlighted there? That's a, that's a question we're wondering, right? Um, anyway, if you like to read the blog post, um, we announced it earlier. Um, we got some comments about it. Um, does anybody else want to add to those? Yeah, I wanted to add something. I think when maybe this is just for myself, like when an established entity is inviting to sp- some me to speak these days or to do something, and then I check the website and they are already like, un- I'm not represented there. 
I usually get the feeling that, hmm, why are they writing to me now? <laughs> they want to improve their diversity numbers. And um, so I think it's really hard in general for something that has already been gone, go, going in, in like an uncontrolled direction to switch to oh, being intentional about diversity. It's way more work. So I, I think I, we have to acknowledge this. If they would start from scratch and try from the beginning to be um, representing more groups. So I think um, this might be like also a reason why, because diversity conversations about diversity are fairly new, at least not in the US, but in the rest of the world, I think. Being intentional about diversity in a lot of circles is not something that was done a lot in the past, so to say. So I think for things that are already established, there might be a little bit of a an effect like that leads to them being finding it harder to attract diverse speakers at this moment. So they will have to do you know go the extra mile for that. I also Lots feel like my... I also feel a little bit like um, sometimes people tend to run away from the name DNI or diversity and inclusion because they say, ah, oh, you're doing some kind of trend thing because you want to be part of the spotlight. So are you actually doing that for the reason of being popular or being um, mentioned about, which um, also kind of contradicting, you know what I mean? It's like some people wants to be part of it because they invite other people that is from the um, minority groups or underrepresented uh, um, underrepresented groups, and to just bring up and say, "Hey, uh, we want to include you," or simply put rainbow colors on their logo. And um, do you really mean that? That's the that's the thing. Do you really mean that you're doing diverse, um, in, inviting a diverse and uh, inclusive? Um, group or or are you just being part of it to to be to be the trend of um of 2020 and 2021 or something like that and um uh, this is something that i i find some people tend to run away from and at the same time some people wants to be that just for the spot like but rest assured the four of us I can feel that it's totally because we feel that we are it's it's like something is burning inside your 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 heart. It's like you want to say something, but uh you're just waiting, just waiting for someone to like pop out to just uh, make that difference. And we realize that we still don't see anyone. And that's why I say, you know what? Let's just do it. We can we can do it. It's it's not there's not gonna be a, t a tomorrow. And uh, I think that was part of the reason why we, we are here too. But I would like to add, uh, wait a second, I would like to add, so I think I heard this term, it's called purple washing when you're doing diversity for like making it look good. Uh, like you have green washing for mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. I think at this point, if other uh, groups or other um, you know podcasts, conferences, if they're doing diversity for all the wrong reasons, I also don't really care as long as they're doing it, the work, you know? <laughs> so yeah. the outcomes are still going to be valuable, right? So I would say to everybody out there who is thinking, okay, but what if my reasons are marketing and make our uh, um, podcast look good and whatever? Yeah, it doesn't matter, you know, just do it. You know, do the work. The work is hard and have more diversity. And yes, it's going to have all sorts of benefits, but you'll see the work is hard. Anyway. Yeah, I agree. Like I I personally see the numbers. I don't care what's the reason of doing it, but if the result is having more diverse, let's say you know, we can go back to Marietta's research in a bit. Like let's say the number of women going, uh, being invited uh, or actually appearing in a podcast is increasing then then that then that that's what I want to say, right? I don't care um, if it's like oh for spotlight whatever. 
is is hard work. I can tell you, like doing diversity and inclusion work is hard work. Is not always get appreciated. Is doing something like sometimes you have to fight against what is popular opinion and stuff, right? You have to fight against the current, and you know, even if someone started just want to, oh, you know, for, for whatever like quotation wrong reason, but you know, as long as they put in the work, as long as we see the results, we should still appreciate that, you know. So let's go back to the numbers, <laughs> maybe. Well, I just wanted to mention though, like, I, I, I don't know how to say that. I find it annoying <laughs> if people say diversity is doing diversity work is something trivial, something easy. You're doing it just because you want to get the spotlight. It, this is harder than writing code. Writing code is very exact, is factual. Is There's a formula um, that you can apply again and again to various code base. Like doing this kind of work is hard. And personally for me, I really rather be writing code and writing bots, but I care enough about this that I want to be participated on this thing like if i tell you if i write say I, I give talks if i talk about my code my bots i feel very happy i will be able to finish that talk in like a day or two i'm done and i feel super happy but i give sometimes i talk about diversity i talk about the community those talks takes me at least two weeks to prepare and then during the rehearsal of that talk, I feel super sad and angry and not happy. Like it's a lot of mental burden being involved in diversity. And yeah, I find it annoying when people said, oh, it's just diversity as if it's easy. Anyway, that's, I, I'm in just rambling. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think it's rambling. I, I totally agree. Um, I I I think all of us here, all four of us here, has been through that stage. Um, I remember when um, I started creating just simple meetups, and um, we month after month, I was literally the only female there, and uh, all the other attendees were were male, and someone just said. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, because female don't want to speak, and, and like, and and someone say, and an interesting thing, uh, one of the company's uh, founders, he was saying that he was there because um, he just tried to get hire new Python developers, and he said, you know what, I cannot find female developers. I've been hiring. No one is there. And so I step into his office one day and I look around the office and there was literally like 90% men. Imagine if you are the single woman working there. Are you? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel comfortable working there if, um, if you are the only one? So I think there are many ways you can make an effort to make a difference. Not only doing the first step, which is super important because someone needs to have that difference there. And um, also, is it, I, I don't, I totally, I, I mean, 2000% disagree that there's no devout female developers out there. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would like to to grab that point and elaborate a little bit because it's not just a workplace, right? I've you know, as you can see the re response from one of the podcast organizers and from other event organizers as well. I've seen this uh, many, many times that they are thinking like, well, we just, you know, choose speaker regardless of gender, right? We just choose whoever we think is great. <laughs> um, but the the point is I think is not well it's it's usually it's a point that got overlooked i am i want to believe that nobody do it on purpose to like you know but the people miss the point that actually now we are not like men and women are not well for, for like we're talking about like in general 
now that's like not in a level playing field because you know young boys have more access more encouraged to um to do something technical to like you know play with computer play with computer games versus like young girl may get less exposure to those um they may not be encouraged um it's just a fact and um so saying that we just we just chose someone regardless of the gender i think it's a bit kind of overseeing the fact that we are not actually like start from the same level <laughs> because by the time you know when like look look at how many who choose the stern object in versus you know because like why like now there's like more female university students but still you know not a lot of them choose uh, to study you know science start to st uh, study engineering like why <laughs> yeah actually i um that i read on this uh, data one time in asia and it's a very very interesting um data that i've seen there are more female um working as doctors scientists and uh, all science and chemistry related and also data related um, job but apparently for the um, related to IT was much lower but back then years before even my partner's um, mom was actually coding uh, so what happened there that's a very interesting question like what happened there and I see that some of the Asians family they also feel like oh because um being a doctor is well regarded being a scientist is well regarded and uh and and there was something very interesting that after reading this data i was like so what happened is is developer something that sounds different more different than than scientists and doctors and uh, chemists and etc I don't know if it more has to do much with being well regarded. So the way I read about it, at least in the West, what happened was that to programming, it just became a powerful job. And it's just how you have class system, you have gender system. It's just our society is pushing uh, the privilege of power on the people that usually have that privilege. So then you have, it became, uh, so women didn't get, yeah, like it's, they didn't get pushed, they got pushed out out of the job. So it's not like it's in the end, you, there's all sorts of ways in a society, how you push a whole group out of something, I guess, media and everything that at the end, you think it was another narrative, but in the end, that's what really happened. Right. So it's been, a prestigious like financially speaking a powerful job and then it just went to the people that usually have the power in our society still just wanted to come around out so a little bit in case everybody forgot right so mariada did research published a blog post we also reached out to the podcast organizers to say hey we're going to publish the po the we're going to publish this do you have anything to say and someone one replied, right? And I think uh, some of the rep replies are also in public. They're on social media. And uh, yeah, maybe we wanted to take the rest of the podcast to discuss a little bit this, right? Like what was the replies? I'm also, also maybe to say for the future in general from diversity work is like, how do you reply when you did maybe something? How do you, how, what would be a good way to reply for people who want to reply? You know, like you, you usually say in uh, diversity and inclusion, when you did something to offend someone accidentally or not, you apologize and you say, I'll do better next time. So that is the gracious way of um, replying when, you know, yeah, so in, in our case, the data does show that there has been a clear trend in one direction and justifying is sometimes not really helpful. It also makes other people feel bad afterwards, right? Yeah, I think Marietta already uh, established a point that when we do this research, we just like out of curiosity and we chose these podcasts because they are popular. 
so first of all, like congratulations if you got chosen, you are popular. Um, but um, I would always give them, uh, you know, the kind of thing that it may be oversight, right? Again, it may be oversight that these benefit of doubt. Who, yeah, I, I don't want to use that word because usually that word means that they, you know, we are accusing someone, but we are not. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that it, it may be an oversight and. You know, um, it's good that we bring it up and have a discussion. So maybe we will figure out how to make it better together. Yeah, I think um, I also want to point out that we are not actually trying to pinpoint at any podcast here or, or anyone that is uh, among the community, which is really not our intention. We just want to figure out why. Is that just like what Marietta said, not just out from Marietta's head, nor Georgie's head, nor Teresa's head, or, or Chuck's perception that um, they are lesser women. So data speaks the truth. And um, I personally, it's not only, it's not only, to be honest, not only female. I would even support that we will invite um, underrepresented um, folks. And I grew up with um, with people who are um, misrepresented many times, especially like uh, the gays, the, um, the lesbians and all this. And I think uh, they are just as a human as any one of us. I'm not going to make any judgment and we are not making any judgment. I'm just going to make it simple to say that we are simply drawing out information and data and uh, we are not pinpointing at anyone else. Yeah. But I would also yeah. like to, yeah, or Maria, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, I guess I just want to mention, like I feel encouraged by the story that we have even in the Python and PyCon community, because at one point, if you go to our about page, uh, at one point, the PyCon speakers were like 99% all men. It's just 1% is women, women speakers. And, but it's got better over the years because, you know, there are several groups of people who intentionally try to make it better. Like it starts with identifying, oh, there's not enough women here. What are we going to do about it? And actually doing something, highlighting the importance of it. And over the years, this, this got improved and I think like this is what we are trying to do here like we want to start by highlighting that there is an issue here what are we doing what can we do and what can you all do like this is from us we're trying to just highlight more women and other represented group members in the python community so maybe there are other ways of what you can do as well so go ahead Teresa yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to add that maybe we sh I, I I don't really need to, for me personally, I don't really need to focus so much on the why. I mean, there's all sorts of whys and some of them are not really um, constructive for moving forward, uh, but rather focus on, yeah, what can we do to make it better? So I think for conferences, in, we've... So we, all of us here have organized uh, conferences, different conferences, and then in a lot of places there were quotas, right? I mean, there were like, it's like, hey, I mean, some conference, they said we want to have this kind of diversity and then we also want to have this other kind of diversity. And those were like at the beginning before speakers were selected, right? So not after, oh, we found all the men speak. <laughs> we, ha we found like 10 men speakers. Now we need to look for women as well or something like that. I, I've seen that also happening, right? But that's a little bit like the wrong direction. So so I think starting from like, hey, what is the end result that you want to have? And then how do we get there? Or how do okay. we encourage more to come in? Yeah, so so we can use this, we can use this podcast as a platform to highlight mm -hmm. that there is an amazing amount of awesome people from all sorts of intersections of diversity in the world that are doing python and they have yeah. really successful stories and less successful stories direct or non-direct to get to where they got that they will share with us 
And then all these people can then be invited on all the other podcasts yep. because we found them. We are helping out. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, that is the point. And I think um, you will see us uh, very soon with all the invited um, list of speakers. We are really excited. And uh, we have already gotten uh, quite a few responses of uh, the speakers that we are going to invite. So stay tuned to our podcast meow. So if you want to send us any message, meow at bypodcasts.life. Um, and that's how you can actually um, catch us. Um, and maybe if you want to speak on our uh, one of our episodes, just uh, write to us. Also, yeah. even if it, this, is, this would be your first podcast, Cat. podcast <laughs> this would be a very first time fav- friendly platform. Also, if you're looking for a female speaker, yeah, if you're yeah, looking for a female speaker, panelist, keynote speaker, you, you know where to look. <laughs> you don't have to. I promise all of our guests are great. I promise. So, so yeah, until yeah. today, you could say there are no women speakers out there, no women doing Python, you know, until today. But from now on, <laughs> you there no more plenty. excuses. <laughs> there won't be any more excuses. Yes, I should mention that um, I want to mention that we have we follow the PSF's code of conduct in this in this uh, community in the Pi Podcasts uh, Pi Podcasts episodes. Basically, the Pi the Pi Podcasts hosts and guests and commenters are bound by the PSF code of conduct, and as well as we are actually supported by the PSF. Um, all our episodes will be spot will be published on the PSF's YouTube channel. And um, because of the by the code of conduct, we hope that this m- encourage more participations from underrepresented group members who might feel that, well, they might get attacked if they appear on internet and things like that. So we are really, that's something we care about. And um, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think, uh, thank you, Python Software Foundation. For supporting us because uh, it doesn't come from zero. We also need some support. All this takes time. All this takes cash. And uh, and yep, thank you PSF for everything. Thank you for your attention. And, and we see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Adios. Bye. Bye.